scared me. Hopefully it's working. But yeah, I've got all my, uh, I've got my computer being, my new computer being assembled upstairs. Finally. I've had the money set aside for God knows how long, and I finally pulled the trigger. And you finally got it. It was more like, what, it wasn't what? really pulling the trigger. It was more like falling down the stairs. Hmm. Because like I bought, just gravity. Yeah. Well, because I, I bought the, the CPU because there was a sale. And then I was immediately like, wait, crap. I need all the rest of the parts in case <laughs> it doesn't work. I don't want to just have it sitting and then I can't return it. So it was just, it, it was very, like, I got the one thing, you know, I tripped and then it was just very quickly down the stairs. Snowball. You had to get everything. So, yeah. Well, hey, you got a new, well, I mean, your old computer was uh, made like, what, six years ago? Longer than that. I made it before I went to college. Oh, so that must have been like, oh yeah. Eight or nine at this point. So due for an upgrade. Yeah. I mean, they say a... that computing power doubles every seven years or so. Well, so. that's, that's Moore's law. Um, the amount of transistors you can fit in a given area doubles, but that's not really been true for a while now. I don't know if we're at the end of it or I can't remember. I, I don't think they can make CPUs any tighter, I think is what it is. So now they're doing other tricks. I think we ended, I don't, don't quote me on that. I think we ended Moore's law, but I'm not positive. And it's not actually a law. It's funny that that's the one that's called a law when it's just a, Hey, this has been the trend. I'm going to, I'm going to say trend for, for tw- 20 years. <laughs> was, it wasn't even that you say long something and you're before like, Wait, he made a, made the thing. Oh, I'm sure your computer, your new computer is better than your old computer. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to, can you, or can you hear us? Have you checked? What on, on, on Twitch? Yeah. Me... Cause I, I got to go through this whole stupid fucking mig- rigmarole to get it to work because for some reason, oh, I, yeah, I can hear us. Uh, Mozilla isn't supported by Twitch anymore. Or at least it won't even let me log in. So I got to incognito uh, Google Chrome it. And then it, <laughs> it has to send me a code. Programming's hard. Yeah. Come on, Matt. Go fix go fix Twitch. Someone's got it. Nope. Oh, please... I really hate how whenever you log into Twitch, it automatically unmutes the top stream. <laughs> Gotta know what's watching. I don't. I don't want to listen to it. Just open it up so I can check it. Um. So yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm almost done putting it together. The. I. I'm gonna have to go return some thermal paste because I bought it. Because silly me, I'm living in the past. Now, if you buy a cooler, it comes with a little, little tiny vial of a thermal little. paste. Well, I mean, if you have a little thermal, you might as well keep it on you just in case you need it for something else. I've got, I already had some in my closet. I just wasn't going to use the 10 year old thermal paste on my new computer. Well, it, 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 it's like a, it's like a fine wine. It ages. Yeah. So, I'm, and it's like, I mean, it's like, it was like 10 bucks. So, you know, I, I'll get a tenner back. You can buy yourself a nice, uh, five guys, burgers and fries <laughs> for 10 bucks. You wish. <laughs> I mean, just the burger, <laughs> yeah, maybe a child, one of the child's burgers. No, no, Five you guys can get is expensive, Cooper. It's not. It's not a single burger. It's not more than ten dollars. All right. Well, we're gonna settle this right now. Five guys. Let's see. Reject all cookies. Um, order now. Uh, pick up. Sure. Block. Continue. You pick can't up. include taxes. You can't include the tip. Well, if I'm picking it up, I'm not gonna leave a tip. You don't you, you don't tip when you go in, right? I mean, if I'm picking it up, but if I'm delivering, right? Yeah, you you don't you don't tip when you pick it up. Okay, Cooper, the normal cheeseburger, just the the plain old cheeseburger, right? How much is that? Like eight something? Nine dollars, nine dollars okay. and well, five cents. There we go, less than ten dollars. But nine dollars for again. a cheeseburger. I won again. Like, come on. And the free peanuts. <laughs> well, that's only if you dine in. Oh, you're picking up, so, you know, you can grab a couple for the road. <laughs> Just take one of the boxes with me. You probably eat the peanuts with the shells, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you know I do. <laughs> I know. I just want to hear you say it. Oh. 
so I'm almost I'm almost done. I got the 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 fan was because it's a cool master. I can't remember what it is the specific CPU cooler I got, but like the fan is just clipped to the to the uh, the radiator, and to install it you you unclip it. And holy cow, getting it clipped back on is it is really hard. <laughs> so I just spent the last fifteen minutes doing that. And I was like, I got time because my alarm went off. I was like, I, I I think I can do this. I I could not finish it in time. Yeah. Here, got Almost everything else there. installed, except I think I popped the RAM out to get the fan on, so I might have to put the RAM back in. But and I didn't buy an optical drive. I want to buy another optical drive because I'm old school like that. Old school. Yeah, well, you'll have a nice, beautiful new computer, and you can play all the newest games on it. Like Factorio. <laughs> Factorio, yeah. <laughs> And Minecraft. Some <laughs> hey, Minecraft! You you put the right mods on it. It can it can be pretty. It can be a workhorse, or it can be it can take a lot of power. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm excited because I mean I've got a in my current PC I've got a 970, um, which is a Gen three or a Gen two. No, no, no. I'm thinking of my I'm thinking of my uh, CPU. My CPU is Gen four, and they're currently up to Gen fifteen or. 23 ah, or something uh, like that you're a couple of gins behind yeah well and it's it's so old i'm actually experiencing cpu bottlenecks just because it's things i'm trying to run do not enjoy running on that old of a cpu so so i'm excited i installed the m2 drives those things are tiny yeah getting smaller every day the two like it's the the one terabyte and the two terabyte ones were the same size I could comfortably eat that. Don't well, <laughs> don't, don't do that. It's like the size of a, what I, when I think of a flash drive, it's like that size. And yeah, it's no storage thinner. has gotten so much smaller. It's amazing. It's insane. I always, uh, I always remember a story my dad told me of whenever uh, he got his first computer. No, his uh, his sister got her first computer, and, and she was bragging how it had uh, fifty megabytes of uh, storage. How that's you could type for the rest of your life and never fill up all that storage. Yeah. Uh, well, Which I was, thought was pretty funny. There was that friends, uh, friends memory thing, right? Friends memory. The show. Um, oh, the show friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. Uh, what was it? He got like a laptop, and he's like, "Oh, it's got fifty meg on it. I'm never gonna fill it up." <laughs> Oops, I, it's. I've got an old hard drive upstairs from one of my dad's old PCs because he's always he's always been into computers. Um, so when he was cleaning up the basement, he pulled the drive and gave it to me. It is the same size as a modern day HDD. You know, it's the it's the standard base size, um, and it is five hundred meg. <laughs> <laughs> its storage is uh that, that's the one that gets me the most. Because now a ter- terabyte drive is like it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember when I bought, I bought both of my new, because I, I bought a two terabyte and a one terabyte um, SM2, or M2, rather, M2 drives. And I think they cost less than I originally spent for my 215 or 50 gigabyte solid state I've got in my PC now. And that's a 2.5 drive as well. Um. And also, I got it on sale. <laughs> it was fifty percent off. So, I originally I was only going to get one hundred twenty-five gigabytes of solid state, and I thought that was fancy. And now it's oh yeah, if you want to play Starfield, you have to download the game to a a solid state drive. Normal or HDD drives aren't fast enough to play it. That just blows my mind. That's where we're at. Technology moves fast. Yeah. I'm just hoping I can keep up. Well, this will help uh, smooth it over for at least a couple more years. I meant mentally, but you know. Oh, <laughs> speaking of uh, someone who wouldn't be able to keep up mentally with computers, <laughs> you, <laughs> you want to jump on into the <laughs> into the album there. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, I'm sure the Venn diagram of computer enthusiasts and Bob Dylan fans is, is you know basically a circle. It's, yeah, it's just a circle. Um. All right, well, here we go, I guess. Hello, everyone, and welcome back 
to the Audio Shop Podcast. It's been a hot second. Um, one weekend was Cooper's fault. The next was mine. But with how many weekends have been Cooper's fault, well, I think I, I think it's fair I get one. Uh, well, you know, things come up. Yes, um, yes. But we're here now, and that's what matters. Yeah, this week we listened to Shadow Kingdom, the brand new album by Bob Dylan. And just as a little preface here, um, this was Cooper's idea. He claimed oh. that we need to put our money where our mouth is, since we always talk about, uh, we talk shit about Bob Dylan all the time. Forgetting that we listened to Highway 61 Revisited. We've already done that. I, re- I remember that, but that was like four years ago. It wasn't that long ago. I uh, okay, maybe two. And then but. we also heard him extensively on Traveling Wilburys, because for some reason he sings half those songs. Well, well that's that, in quotation. That kind of gives us, you know, we, we got, you know, young Bob Dylan and, you know, Bob Dylan group. Now we're getting, you know, modern day Bob Dylan. I guess. You know, when and, as, listen... and as much as we rag on the guy, I feel yeah. like we have at least a little respect there. And we we did listen to Murder Most Foul, which came out during the pandemic, but we didn't review that one. We just made fun <laughs> of it privately. <laughs> I'll, I'll make fun of it publicly, too. It's, yes, I will as well. I'm going to reference it heavily during one of the songs on this album. It's a uh, funny concept for a song. It's 17 um, minutes and it's... 10 minutes of it is just listening. You remember when we did this and all the old people, I went to the comments. I remember I was like, man, I cannot wait to shit on Bob Dylan with all the people in the comments. And I scrolled down and it was just a bunch of boomers. Oh yeah. He knows how to make that music. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. That was some of the worst stuff I've ever heard. Come on guys. <laughs> no one makes music like this anymore. No one's ever made music like this <laughs> ever. This is he's the first just, song. Like he's this. not even singing. He's, he's making a list. I'm pretty sure there was a grocery list in there even too, just so he would remember it later. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, give us the history, Cooper, so we can we can get on with this shit show. Yeah, so, so we're talking about Bob Dylan, born Robert Aller, Allen Zimmerman, all the way back in 1941. So the man's uh, over 80 years old. It and shows. Of course, and it's, of course, uh, an American singer-songwriter. Um, he's one of the best-selling music artists of all time, with over 100 million records sold. Um, of course, he is critically lauded as well. He's won Grammys. Uh, Golden Globes, somehow, <laughs> an Academy Award, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's got a Presidential Medal of Honor or Medal of Freedom, Nobel, a Nobel Prize in Literature. Uh, guy's basically gotten every creative award you can get out there. A Pulitzer Prize, Pulitzer, 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 Pulitzer Prize. Uh, so needless to say, he's been well-respected in his time. Um. And uh, even though he's 80, he's still going at it because Shadow Kingdom uh, just released June 2nd. So just a week ago, it is his 40th studio album, which is a lot of albums, but he's also been active for like 60 years. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> about tracks. And uh, it was uh, recorded back in 2021. It was actually recorded while being shot for a uh, accompanying like, I guess, like concert film. Um, in which he kind of they do this entire set right mm-hmm. so uh and it's basically a consisting of 13 songs of his uh recordings from uh, basically songs from the first half of his career so these are all kind of almost covers of his own songs um of course with a little more stripped back instrumentation and obviously with a much uh more wizened voice and uh this album received uh universal praise from critics Bob Dylan is quite the critical darling. So this is uh, this is uh, the background to going into Shadow Kingdom. Yep, it's uh, it's an album, all right. Well, let's let's go into the first track. Sam, you know I don't want to I don't want to spoil what I'm thinking, but I can tell from the way you're talking that you're really into this album and that you've got a lot of good things. To yeah, say about yeah, it. a lot of good things, a lot of good things. <laughs> So we'll tra- start with uh, track number one, When I Paint My Masterpiece, which is uh, from his album Cahoots, 1971. You know, it, it starts really nice. We got some really nice folk instrumental. Lazy harmonica adds to the sound. Um, the instrumentals are nice on this album when they actually are played. Uh, <laughs> and right at the start, I, I, you know, I had some hope. I was like, wow, that's some he can he can really folk sing there at the start. And then he just stops and starts talking. I wouldn't say talk maybe sing talking. No. 
sing you can't call that singing i can call it singing no, i will call well, it singing. You're, you can be wrong but this is critically acclaimed bob dylan cooper i don't care <laughs> <laughs> they're wrong yeah i mean bob's voice is obviously i mean we'll get out of the way he's pretty uh i mean it's old right he's over 80 years old and i'm i am fine with that like I said, when he started singing right at the start, it was really good folk singing. His age really adds to the, the timbre of the, the sound. But then he doesn't sing, and he just talks. Yeah, he kind of has this sing-songy voice uh, where it goes about it. But I think it fits decently well with the instrumentation, especially this kind of folksier renditions of all his songs. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um, around the 245 mark, there's like that Spanish style guitar, just because he said running around all over the world, which really <laughs> doesn't fit with the song. The accordion works. I'll give him that. That it was just he's like, I need something that sounds international, and then he does that. I was like, it, I will. I will say every time he did a Bob Dylan esque inflection, I, I felt compelled to audibly out loud ah, to, to do it the same. <laughs> oh. The man's consistent in that way. Like, I, I think that we're making, whenever we do it, I, I feel like, oh, man, we're this is a caricature. And then I listen to him again. I'm like, no, this is this is what it sounds like. <laughs> it's not like, it's not consistently always that silly, but it's definitely occasionally that silly. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, and then, I mean, I, I would have given him points for the rollover, but looking back at it from the rest of the album, I don't. Um, because it's not really a rollover. It's just the song ends, and then they all play a couple of notes, and then the next song starts. I like the rollovers. It, it, I mean, they're not the mo they're not like the most creative rollovers of all time. They're also not like good. A it's the same thing every time. It's everybody just you play your play your favorite couple of chords, and then <laughs> it's like a little intermission. There's nothing connecting either of them. He just wanted something that could be split down the middle and put onto both tracks. It's it's like a little connective tissue. It's you know it's usually the last fifteen seconds or twenty seconds of a song, that kind of lends into the next one. Especially since I guess they all came from you know different albums. Yeah, but um, again, every single rollover sounds exactly the same. No, no, they're not. They're not like super varied. But I appreciate the little extra effort. No, I would have preferred just a hard cut. I prefer the rollovers. All right. Well, you know. You could be wrong about multiple things. Jump to track number two if you're ready, Coop. I'm not Bob Dylan. <laughs> I didn't write this. I just say what I like. Uh, track number two. Most likely, you go your way and I'll go mine. Just from his 1966 album, Blonde on Blonde. <sighs> Cooper, did you get the check I sent you to review me well? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just want—I just want to give Bob a fair shake. I don't. I, I certainly I don't. don't. <laughs> I don't want to give him a fair shake. I feel like we gave him a fair shake when we listened to Highway 61 revisited, and that was crap too. Look, you—you you gotta gotta come in with a little bit of an unbiased, you know, you know, bent to it. No, I came in with low expectations, and he failed even to beat those, Cooper. Um, okay, okay. So, so what do you not like about uh, this song then? Track number two. Okay, well, I'll I'll show my hand a little bit. I consider this the second worst song on the album. Oh, okay. Um, the backing instrumental is not great in this. Like in the previous one, the backing instrumentals were pretty good, and um, you know worked well in this one the accordion mimics the vocal line and the guitar sounds like an unplugged electric guitar and the yeah. accordion mixed with the vocal is just is not a good sound there's there's yeah. also a lot of dead space where it tries to l rely on his voice to prop things up but he's just talking so it can't prop anything up yeah there's definitely uh sections on this album where i think the you know, scarce instrumentation it works better than some, and I don't think yeah. it works as well on this one. It I mean, it's a little work. more aggressive, but it, it kind of doesn't really fill in that sound with enough other instrumentation to kind of keep up with it. And then it was this was also like half a song, and he gives it the longest ending of any song on the album. He just ends it halfway through and does an outro, and then it ends, and then he does the crappy rollover. <laughs> It's just, ugh. 
I, I like. I still like the roll. I still like the rollovers. I, I cannot. You believe you like those rollovers? It's just everybody tuning their instruments, and then the next song starts. It adds to like the kind of the rawness, the live performance element of it. Um, no, I don't particularly care for this song. Apparently, yeah. he's performed this song in concert for four hundred times um, over like the last fifty years. Who is buying tickets to a Bob Dylan concert? A lot of people really like Bob Dylan. Why? Sam. I don't. I. I, I want to know why. I don't know. I mean, I I don't hate him as much as you do. <laughs> yeah. I can see his perks. I don't get like where he's like so dearly beloved. Uh, maybe you have to be from like a different, like a certain time or like a certain generation maybe. to like get a little bit more to connect on like a more emotional level. Because by all accounts, he's not. Because you hate me. <laughs> Fuck off, Bob. <laughs> Go upstairs. <laughs> oh, you forgot to feed him tonight. <laughs> That's why he's all rowdy. <laughs> So don't don't touch my computer. I'll fix it when I come up there. <laughs> Sam, I helped your computer. I poured water on it. <laughs> <sighs> okay, jump into track number three if you're ready. Yeah, track number three, Queen Jane, approximately. Um, off of Highway 61 Revisited. Mm-hmm. Um... I think I made this comment when we listened to it there too, but most of the song is just "Won't you come see me, Queen Jane?" Approximately, yeah. This one I, uh, this one I definitely don't like that much. Um, again, the, the vocal content is not very interesting. No, there's there's elements where like Bob Dylan technically is not a good singer. <laughs> Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Let's just be clear. There's a reason I mean, that I, Tom Petty is called Bob Dylan if he could sing. Um, so so what people are drawn to is like the personality, you know, kind of the emotionality of it, the lyrics. Um, I've never been sucked too much into Bob Dylan's lyrics personally. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you, you're a big big fan of those uh, grocery list song. <laughs> it's, oh, this that song not especially. as bad as Murder Most Foul, but it's again, he's just making a list. Yeah, I mean, this one's, like, very, very scant instrumentation. Like, some mild acoustic and, like, some accordion. I mean, the whole album's just, you know, acoustic, accordion, and electric guitar, harmonica. Yeah. Um, but this is, like, the most, like, I don't know, thin out of all of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't help that the accordion doesn't really fit well with this song. Yeah, but they only, they only had the four instruments, so they got to use them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the the acoustic guitar and the harmonica is nice in this one, but that's about the only nice part of the song. Um, and then we get a we get some nice other random notes before launching into the next song. Look, I'm going to keep saying I like the rollovers. I, I not do gonna not understand me. how you like them. They were, they were tolerable care. for the first five times, but after that, it was like, this is just the same thing every time. It's driving me they crazy. They had character. It's consistent. They had character to the album. I, okay, whatever. Track number yeah. four. Track number four, I'll Be Your Baby Tonight. Off of his 1967 album, John Wesley Harding. His uh, his rhyming skills leave a lot to be desired, I'll be honest. But I mean, the, the lyrics here are, I mean, out of anything that doesn't change off of a Bob Dylan song, right? It's the lyrics, right? Um, I mean, this one's like a little more energetic. Kind Bob's voice like is a, a little more gruff. A little bit for some reason. Yeah, it's got a little, it's almost got like a, a little more summery vibe on it. Kind of like a, uh, I don't know, kind of country blues showdown thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and he also sounds a little bit drunk on this one for some reason. I think that's just his delivery with the energy. I mean, he's also in his 80s. So. Yeah, slurring a little bit. I also... <laughs> One thing I will say, I really love how the accordion is entirely in the left ear with nothing to balance it out on the other side. That was nice. <laughs> it's been a while since you said something like that. <laughs> it's It's been a while <laughs> since we had anything egregious. Most of the, Recently, we've had some good balancing. You know, like King Gizzard, they know how to balance. If they've got That's something true. on either side, they balance it. This does not balance. And maybe that's something to do with like the live recording aspect of it. Either that um, or you're slightly deaf in one ear. I don't think I don't think Bob did the <laughs> mixing and mastering on this album. <laughs> Let me break out my Mac. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no way. 
Hey, look, he's not Jeff Lynn. He doesn't do all of it by himself. <laughs> oh, God, who produced this album? It wasn't Jeff, was it? <laughs> I doubt it. It would have been better if it had been Jeff. I'm looking. Let's... It was Alma Harrell and Christopher Leggett. Well, there you go. The more you know. Okay, jump into track number five if you're ready. Yes, track number five. Uh, just like Tom Thumb's Blues, also from Highway 61 Revisited. Mm-hmm. I generally could not understand some of the words he said in this one. It was so slurred and mumbled. It's this mumble rap. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I don't I don't want to listen to any mumble rap, be it a SoundCloud rapper or Bob Dylan. <laughs> The original mumble rapper. <laughs> the original. Um, I, wait, who came first, Bruce Springsteen or Bob Dylan? No, definitely Bob Dylan. <laughs> Bob Dylan, okay. Bruce Springsteen's the cheap imitation. Except um, he can actually sing. Uh, no, I mean, Bob's vocals have some serious waiver on them on this song. Yeah. Um, I, I could not understand <laughs> what he was saying. And then the left ear... I... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I should say I have my notes that it's not it's not good, but it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the left ear in this you... one again is super heavily loaded. Uh, it tries to offset it in the right with his vocals, which you know don't happen very often in this song. <laughs> so it's mostly just everything in the left. And it, uh, when he does sing or sing in quotations, when he does speak, uh, it's not offset by the bright strumming of the acoustic guitar. So great stuff. I'm going to move on to the next song. <laughs> Track number are. six. Track number six, Tombstone Blues. Also Highway 61 Revisited, also blues. Uh-huh. Musically, it's influenced by the blues, with lyrics that are typical of Dylan's surreal ty- style of the period. It- such lines as, the sun's not yellow, it's chicken. <laughs> and the reincarnation of Paul Revere's horse. <laughs> Truly a lyricist of his time. This is the least bluesy song on this album. The irony. Also, uh, this is this is exactly what Murder Most Foul sounded like to me. He was just making fucking random lists, saying random things. There's no backing track for most of the song. It's just him speaking in bad rhymes, rhymes and nonsensical lines. Yeah, this one's super stop and start in terms of instrumentation. Calling this music is generous. I would, it has I, instruments. <laughs> that doesn't make it music. O- occasionally. Um, and then right at the end of the song, they just kind of left. He was just tuning his guitar at the end. They just left that in. Character <laughs> rollover. Live performance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this song, this song isn't really great. Just a quote from Wikipedia: Generally regarded as one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Um, I think that statement can be refuted by this song. <laughs> pretty, pretty firmly. Like, there's obviously an audience for this. Are, are, who, are they fucking deaf? What's, what's going on? Who is listening to this? Highly praised. Uh, it's almost pretty highly praised. You know why? It's because no one is no one's uh, ballsy enough to stick it to Bob Dylan. No one can say he fucking sucks to his face. Everyone has to suck up. <laughs> Just because they've been sucking up to him for the last 60 years. You suck. <laughs> retire stop making music don't perform just go 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 enjoy your money and then leave us be <laughs> man you're taking this kind of person i am Sam. taking it personally because he just f- fucking lives in my house <laughs> sam i'm in your walls i can't sleep at night because he's practicing his stupid songs quote unquote <laughs> Oh, well, here, let's let's go on to the next song. Let's go to track number seven, To Be Alone With You. From his 1969 album, Nashville Skylight. Um, There's a backing track in this one, at least. Yeah, I kind of like the instrumentation on this one. It sounds remarkably similar to everything else on the album, however. Yeah, this album definitely, uh, I mean, they only have four instruments, right? And Bob. Uh, So three. So, <laughs> so um, it's a negative, uh, negative one. Obviously, it's a very consistent sound throughout the album. 
um, which I guess can be kind of interesting. It's like a limiting factor, but it does kind of lead to a lot of his songs sounding similar to the same. But it's interesting considering they're all, you know, written from different time periods of his. Um, I mean, this one's got a little more instrumentation, a little more energy. I feel like if you're a Bob Dylan fan, you'd probably get a little more out of it. <laughs> I guess you could describe this album as that as a whole. I I just I can't wrap my right, my head around who who listens to this and like yeah yeah I'm this is my jam. Kitty Empire gave it a five out of five star review in the Guardian, calling it completely thrilling and identifying it as a high point as Dylan's poignant drawl on a sensational "What was it you wanted?" a series of accusational questions that stress how slippery knowledge is. That's how she uh, that described this album. Oh, uh, what was it? Let's go talk about that one. Let's jump to track number eight. I thought this one was funny. Track number eight. What was it? What was it you wanted? <laughs> I didn't say that right. Yeah, track number eight was what was it you wanted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From his uh, 1989. So actually pretty far in the future uh, on his album, Oh Mercy. Which, okay. So I thought this, uh, so I went into, the, I didn't. I didn't really look at what this album was before. I didn't realize these were just him covering himself, which is even more disappointing. Uh, but you know, we we've got the 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 title of the song repeated over and over again, which is fine. There's actually a story here. He's always called the storyteller um, artist, and this is one of the only ones that we on this album that actually has a story that isn't talking about the sun being a chicken. Um, it's about memory failing. And so not realizing that this was an older song, I was like, wow, okay. He's, he's making a song about being older. You know, it carries a lot of emotion. He's, he's not remembering things. You know, if you look at it from that angle, it's like he's talking to a younger, young, younger, younger family member, um, about, you know, being older and he's, he doesn't remember things. Um, and that would carry a lot of emotion. Um, but it's not, and it, that makes it even funnier because he's really old. <laughs> I think it, it, in some ways, it's maybe why he chose to revisit this song, right? I don't know if he has that concept in him. I'll be honest. I think, I, I think Bob Dylan's pretty self-aware. Is he? I mean, he's been doing it for 50 years. He wrote sure Murder he Most Foul, a 17-minute song about the JFK assassination. He didn't say he did it for you. <laughs> But it this song is either hilarious or it's the most uh, deep song on the album. There's no in between. Because if he did do it as a well, you know, I'm getting older. This is I'm probably going to start losing my memory here soon. Then that's you know that's a very emotional thing. But if he didn't, he just decided to cover this. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I it's on purpose, given given that it's preceding track number nine, Forever Young. I, I think there's a bit of a, a parallel here. Mm. Like, you, you don't have to like Bob Dylan, but I, I think he's at least aware of his own discography. And this seems pretty, you know, on the nose if, he, if it wasn't. Which is kind of why I hope it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you just want an uncharitable reading of it because you think it's funny. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but Forever Young, which is from his uh, 1973 album, Planet Waves. So I actually, I, I, I actually quite like this one. I didn't have anything, I didn't have anything about this one. Obviously, it takes a a, a little more of a it takes out like a more uh, I don't know forlorn or maybe melancholic approach. You know, now that he's old, but he's singing forever young. Mm-hmm. It's a little more self reflective in that way. But you know, the light piano accompaniment, the voice. I think his voice carries a lot of emotion in this song. I actually had nothing for this one. I just wrote, it sounds like all the rest of the songs. It's a little more acoustic, led. I think it has a little more emotion in it. Jump into track 10 if you're ready. Track 10, Pledge in My Time, from Blonde on Blonde again. I like the way he says breath on this song. <laughs> breath! <laughs> um... The, the only difference between this song and Forever Young is he says plenty or pledging my time rather than Forever Young. Okay, okay. This song's uh, much worse than Forever Young. 
at this kind of sleepy it's like another sleepy bluesy song cooper we're 10 tracks in i was checked out playing factorio at this point <laughs> this is an hour-long album i <laughs> Sam, this is, you have to do your due diligence. I, I did my we due diligence the, for the right. first eight songs. Once we hit, was that, once we hit, um, what was it? Once we hit Tombstone Blues, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a wash. <laughs> well, here, we'll, we'll move on to then track number 11 then. Uh, the Wicked Messenger from his album, John Wesley Harding. Uh which, uh, okay, I'll admit I was also starting to lose steam here. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, I, I, can't, I can't fault the instrumental on this one. It's actually a good beat. Um, and if you just somehow managed to tune out Bob Dylan, which I did, it was okay. Yeah, I mean, the instrumentals are solid throughout the album. Well, it depends. I mean, Sometimes they're solid. Well, where, where they're allowed to be solid. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're it's pretty simple overall, you know. You could charitably say strict back. Yeah. You know, you could also say a little boring. But in this one, it was enjoyable because I actually, I managed to put a filter on my brain and I didn't hear his voice. It's got like a descending acoustic line, a nice little guitar line. I think it's got a little more going on here with a lot more focus on those like, you know, guitars in the back. Yeah. Let's power through to the end. <laughs> I'll go to track number 12 then, Watching the River Flow. Um, from 1971. Yeah, I, uh, this might be the closest thing to a full song on this album. He's uh, <laughs> His singing isn't great, but at least it's not spoken word. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a little more... Yeah, it's probably you know, the most like complete song in terms of instrumentation here. Um, a little more country rock. A little more energy. Um, I think the song songwriting is a little more solid on this one. Yeah, that's all I had though because I was checked out. <laughs> Track number right, thirteen. Right. It's all over now, baby blue. Sadly, not yet. Um, but this is the the uh, last uh, cover song of the album. Mm -hmm. Second he's, last song. He's back to spoken word. He is really, really <laughs> spoken word on this song. It's going full like waiver on this one. She packed my bags last night pre-flight. <laughs> now you really have to hold out that last syllable. Fly! Zero hour, 9 a.m. <laughs> Bob's a little done with his album at this point as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, jumping to track 14. <laughs> wow, you're just reading through this. Yeah, track 14. Do you 14. have anything else to add, Cooper? <laughs> track 14, Sierra's theme, which is the, I, actually... Silence speaks volumes there. <laughs> which is the one original song on this album. Mm -hmm. Arguably the uh, best as well, because Bob Dylan does not speak. It's a full instrumentation, no vocals. However, it is just the same loop of chorus for four minutes. Yeah, it's a very simple song. What a way to end an album. A true visionary. It's a rather simple song. I think I think it's a nice little closer, honestly. Uh, not for it's four cute. minutes. I, yeah, maybe not a four-minute song, yeah. but... If you made it two, yeah, that would work. But the same thing repeated for four minutes? No. Well, then we're at the end of the album, Sam. That's the end. Thank the Lord. Well, now we got to give our favorite and least favorite. So I'm, I'm going to start with you, Sam. What's your favorite song on this album? Cooper, I don't know. I can't. You got, you, I you got to pick, pick one. A favorite. Let's you go pick with one. Uh, watching the river flow. I guess. Okay. Any particular reason? It's the closest thing to a full song, and it's not spoken word either. That or Sierra's theme, since Bob Dylan's not on it. I'll probably go with Forever Young myself. I like his uh, vocal delivery on that one. I think it's got a lot of emotion in it. I think we're gonna... <laughs> in, that, in that case, what's your least favorite song? <laughs> I think album? we're going to be in agreement on this one. It's Tombstone Blues. Um, oh. It is it is horrible. It, it, when I went and listened to... I, I'm not going to listen to Murder Most Foul again because it still haunts me. But this is what I recall exactly feeling. Um. It's just random gibberish with poor rhyming and spoken word lists. It is not good. That was probably my second least favorite. I also didn't like uh, Queen Jane approximately. Okay, yeah, I agree. That one wasn't great. That one was like just like, it was just very loud instrumentation. Tombstone Blues like... almost killed me. 
Now, well, there we are at the end of the album. We got our favorite and least favorite. Sam, do you want to... How do we rate these albums again? Do you want to give us an explanation? Sure, Cooper. So here at Audio Shop Podcast, we have a car-themed music podcast because every other concept was taken for a music podcast and every concept for a car podcast was taken. So we merged the two. Um, so we've got Showroom, which is the tip-tip-top cream of the crop, the best of the best. You're going to show this to everybody. You're going to play this at your wedding. And then we've got Scrapyard, bottom of the barrel, worst of the worst, one out of five. They phoned it in. They just did it for money. Or they're senile. Um, Cooper, I'm not going to ask you your opinion because I'm going to segue right into mine. Wow. It's the latter. Bob Dylan, senile. This is Scrapyard. Don't listen to this album. Wow, the lowest rating. Yes. It's not the lowest. Uh, it, it's not the bottom, very, very bottom. I still think um, I still think Santana might have that spot, but it's definitely below Imagine Dragon's Origins. Wow. I, that is, that is, that is savage. Because at least, I, I at least imagine they turned around. So I think that's tainting my my view of that album a little bit. Because Imagine Dragons, they 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 turn themselves around. Bob Dylan's been digging this hole for sixty years. Well, it's been working for him for sixty years. Yeah, I don't know how. What do what do what do you what do you think, Cooper? What do you rate in this album? I'd probably give it like a low fixer upper. Fixer upper. Uh, Jesus Christ. I think you're being overly harsh to it. I am not being overly harsh to it. Like, I, I would not personally come back to listen to this album. But there's elements of it that I like. Cooper, um, Fixer Upper implies that there's at least three or four songs that you would like to listen to again. There's a couple songs on this album I'd like to listen to again. I said low. I said low, Fixer Upper. Mm-hmm. Um, but whenever I, there was a, when I first listened to this album, I was driving through the countryside. It was near sunset. I had a, I had a bit of emotionality connection to it. I can had a little not crashing your car. The, 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 the wavelength starts to line up a bit. Now on my re-listens, whenever I was actually writing things down, it was not as good. Um, but you know, situationally, I, I, I saw where people could get into it. Um, I think at some value, I think it's interesting concept to go back and re-review or re like kind of do over some of your music from like 50 years ago. Well, I, I definitely am not a huge Bob Dylan fan by any means. Um, I thought, you know, it had some interesting moments and at the very least, you know, some songs that I like. So I think a low fixer for is fine. Definitely wouldn't recommend it to anyone unless you're like a big Bob Dylan fan. And if you but are also a big not... Bob Dylan fan, I'd recommend you reevaluate your life. Sam, he's got a pull, pull, Pulitzer, <laughs> Pulitzer Prize. What does it matter if you can't even say what the prize is? <laughs> you know, I can't read. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Um, if life is too short to listen to bad music, don't listen to this. Don't, so brutal. So don't brutal. listen to all the hype. It's just a bunch of I don't I don't know I don't know what everyone else listened to, but listening to Tombstone Blues alone should make you closer to suicide. It's not good. It's I it's, I don't know I don't how does this get five out of five from anyone? Jeez, Lou. Well, that I agree with. I don't see how this is going to be rated as a perfect album. Like. I I honestly think it's just people are too scared to say you know what Bob Dylan's actually <laughs> shit. <laughs> Scared. it's bob dylan what is he gonna break it no in no there? no not <laughs> not not what anything that he would do but the fact that it's it's one of those social faux pas right because everybody's it, been rating him so high for so long it's like well can, if i if i rate him low people could be like oh you don't you don't understand the music but everyone is thinking that except for rolling stones magazine but we know where their loyalties lie <laughs> that's out my whole time god it's maybe if you're deaf well, there we go. <laughs> Real speed I, round of I, I, audio shop. I got I got the sticky switch in. This will probably be our last Bob Dylan review. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you cannot convince me to do another one. Dude. Come on, this is. I'm surprised I got this one, honestly. Because <sighs> I forgot we did Highway. I blocked Highway 61 <laughs> revisited from my mind. Oh. <sighs> anyway, let's roll on over the spare tire, which is just whatever else we've been listening to in the past month since our last episode. Yeah, let's cool it down a bit. So what have you been listening to, Sam? I don't know. I don't think I've really been listening to anything. I've been catching Nothing. up on a lot of uh, podcasts is what I've been doing. Uh-huh. And I was Which really, podcasts? really behind. Um, it's it's called Zero Degrees. It's it's very filthy, but it's sponsored by Sure. <laughs> 
which I text Matt about. Uh, That's funny because they have some real raunchy stuff, and they got invited to uh, to a convention to use the booth. So, but yeah, catching up on that. That's really it. I I I haven't had time at work. I've been really slammed recently away from my desk, so I haven't had a chance to uh, to listen to a lot of music. Because then when I get home, I don't. While I'm driving, I put some YouTube on or something. Or actually, I've been listening to just my top twenty most recent liked songs because I just slap that on and skip through and stop on them. So that's really all I've been listening to. What about you, Cooper? What have you been listening to? Um, honestly, not too much on my end either. It's just been a real busy last few weeks. Um, also, work's been happening. Now, a couple albums here and there. I got like the new uh, McKinley Dixon album I thought was really good. Uh, Taiko Inoki released a concert album that I thought was excellent. Um, but yeah, beyond that, it's kind of bits and pieces. I got a new car personally. Yeah. Uh, so that's been that. a lot, considering a lot of my time this last week, last two weeks. Um, but yeah, not, nothing to us here. Bob Dylan was kind of in a musical black hole. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, that was, <laughs> yeah, I guess we did decide to listen to this about the same time that, uh, we ended. <laughs> it just puts you off music. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, uh, that's the last, are you, are you going to be available next weekend, Cooper, for audio shop? Uh, I believe so. So you can. I'll, I'll let you choose the next album, Sam. Yeah, let's let's pick something funner. Um, so maybe there's something new. I'll, I'll I'll take a look. I'll see what's around. Uh, but that's that's the show today. If you've liked what you've heard, um, for some reason, and you would like to listen to us more, you can go to the youtube channel which is in the the twitch description scroll down it's a picture of jeff lynn he's the guy with the fake afro and the aviators click that it'll take you to all the previous well almost all the previous uh audio shop episodes and if you want to listen to us live in the description on youtube there's a link to the twitch that's 8 p.m's usually eastern sorry i should rephrase that it's usually 8 p.m eastern every sunday lately it's not been every sunday uh but yeah, and uh, apparently Twitter's in its death throes, right, Cooper? Do we still have that? We, did, did we make a threads yet? We probably should do and that. Twitter, Twitter still exists, so you can follow us at Audio Shop Pod. that's P-O-D, at Twitter, um, as long as it's still around by that time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's in its death throes. Who would have thought that not paying your bills and firing everyone that knows how to run the platform would backfire? That will do it. I think well, that's that's all I got. Yeah, that's all I got. I need to go take a nap and beat Bob Dylan. <laughs> so, thank you all for listening, and we will see you next time. See you later, Shaffies. See you. <laughs>